بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم. Quran teaches and recites of Syria. Um, his father-in-law, Shaykh Muhammad Sukhra Rahimahullah Ta'ala, those who are well versed in Quran would be familiar with that name. Um, Shaykh has been teaching um, for over 20 years in that masjid of Shaykh Muhammad in Arabi. And he's also a leading young scholar of Damascus. Um, he's been teaching in the West for over 20 years. He's lived in America, he's worked in America. He's worked in Jeddah and Riyadh for over 15 years. So there's a lot of experience there, alhamdulillah. So thank you for accepting our invitation. Make sure your cars are parked properly, that's what the brother is saying, so be careful. السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم، الحمد لله رب العالمين، الحمد لله حمدا يوافي نعمه ويكافئ مزيده، الحمد لله الذي خلق فسوى، والحمد لله الذي قدر فهدى، والحمد لله في الآخرة الأولى. سبحانك يا ربنا لا نحصي ثناء عليك أنت كما أثنيت على نفسك، نستغفرك ونتوب إليك. وأفضل الصلاة وأتم التسليم على سيدنا محمد الصادق الأمين سيد الأولين والآخرين وقائد الغد المحجرين وعلم السابقين وسيد ولد آدم أجمعين والشفيع المذنبين اللهم صل وسلم وبارك عليه وعلى آله الغد الميامين وأصحابه نجوم الدين ومن تبع بإحسان إلى يوم الدين وعنا معه برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم لا سهل إلا ما جعلته سهلا وأنت تجعل الحزن إذا شئت سهلا اللهم انفعنا بما علمتنا وعلمنا ما ينفعنا زلنا علما وفقينا إذا علمتنا أما بعد your doctors and others you know are not doctors إن شاء الله we'll try in this evening you know to highlight certain points and I was asked to have a common look and in the hand out they highlighted for me the common matters, you know, in Islam, uh, which I felt as if they are directed, you know, to look at those who are common or shared between the, the Islamic look to these issues, you know, and the modern medical look to it, these issues. What I added from my side, the difference, the difference in look between the Islamic look, at least, at least from my viewpoint, and the modern, modern medical look to these issues. So I'll try to highlight firstly those who come together, you know, or they are shared, you know, by Islam and uh, the modern medical issues. Basically, about the importance of the life of humankind, and this has been highlighted in one verse in the Holy Quran, وَمَنْ أَحْيَاهَا فَكَأَنَّمَا أَحْيَا النَّاسَ جَمِيعًا Whoever sustained or helped to survive one life as if he did so for all of humankind. And this just to tell about the importance of the human life Islamically, you know, in the Holy Quran and in the prophetic tradition of the Prophet And this is, many scholars, they look at it as a collective data taken from different verses and different prophetic tradition to be called as a definite thing, okay? This is one of the most definite matter about Islam, to keep up the health of your body, the survival of, of your body. And uh, if I want to go further, and I may come uh, touch them, you know, a little bit later on, you have the five, five most highly recommended to be kept in you know, Islam. According to our scholars, even the past, the first one comes the religion. This is the most important one. Then come the life. Then come the intellect or intelligence. Then come the money. And lastly, the film. Okay, these are the major matters that many of the scholars, they took this idea about the five, not from a specific verse, not from a specific 
uh, profit expedition, they, co they have collected that That's because you may have a pile of verses speaking about the importance of the first item or second or third or five. And they put in this order because they felt this is the way it was expressed in the Holy Quran and in the prophetic tradition. And for them, it's one of the mainstay, one of the most definite matter Islamically. As you may know, in Islam, we have something which is certain and definite. And this, most of them, not all of them, they are going to be considered the base of the Islam, the essentials of Islam. And Islam is going to be built religiously and uh, scientifically on them, okay? Then you have something which is highly probable or highly possible or a little, little bit less. And those matters, they are, generally speaking, of more flexibilities, okay? And I think even in med uh, modern medicine, you have the same thing. You have something which is definite, even though in medicine, to best of my knowledge, correct me if I'm wrong, you know, uh, those definite and uh, well-settled matters, they are quite few. And then you have those experimental uh, matters. And since, since uh, 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 medicine as a science is one of the most obvious you know, experimental uh, science, that's why you have, you have these changes you know, coming uh, every once in a while or frequently according to the importance of that matter. Then to highlight, again this is shared perhaps by Islam and by the modern medicine, but Islam make it more broadened when he said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, there is no disease that God has created except that he also he has created its treatment. Except this. This is the rest of the hadith which is not written here. And this is not just to encourage the initiation of the experimental task or uh, uh, the profession of it, you know, among those who are highly specialized in it. And as you may see, I mean, most of us, we are practitioners, we don't, add, we, we don't have any input, you know, there, you know. But I have seen in U.S. and I assume here in U.K. you have said the same, you know. You have these people who are confined to their work you know, at universities or whatever, and they spend all, all of their life. I, I imagine, I don't know if I'm right or wrong, even when they go and sleep, they are going to dream about the same matters that they got themselves in involved uh, in it, you know. Whereas most of the practitioners, they dream about collecting money or whatever of that we got. Again, this is shared by, by, uh, between Islam and the, uh, the modern medicine in that regard. Then to highlight certain rules about which help us you know, to give the right answer. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us you know, in this regard. Before going to the uh, certain rules, I would like to show some of the differences you know, between, between Islam and the modern medicine. The first one this is what I believe. I heard from some Muslims they may differ, but majority of Muslims they believe that Islam, uh, uh, the humankind according to Islam is a component of body, physical thing, and soul, non-physical. And this is, you have here significant difference between Islam and modern medicine in this regard. To the best of my knowledge, you know, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, we still in modern medicine, they deny what we call ruh in Arabic or what has been challenged in the Quran that they will never know it, you know, till the hereafter, okay? Uh, with, whereas in Islam, if I mention one verse about the survival of a one, one self, I, in my mind, I have five or six verses speaking about the nature of the soul in different aspects. And this component for me is going to make a main difference, you know, between the, the modern medicine and Islam. Here we are not dealing with machine, we are not dealing with a goodness, we are not dealing with something that you are going to read everything on the materialistic, materialistic look that many or, or perhaps all of the non-Muslims, and I'm sorry to say many of the Muslims, they have this look, you know, to this uh, uh, 
uh, matter, you know. And I would like to remember, to remind myself al always and make the other you know, remember that you are dealing here with a human kind. We are de you, you deal with the soul and the body in the real one. This is the first point that I, I think Islam differs. Sometimes or many times you are going to find them, you know, in the controversial way, you know. When, whenever you are spiritually high, you are going to be physically low and vice versa. That's why any of you, hopefully all of you, you fast, you know, and during fasting you find yourself, you know, toward the end of the day that you are way down as weak, you know, because of no, no food, no drink, or whatever, but spiritually you are going to find yourself high. And this experience, you know, may happen in many different aspects, you know, not necessarily only in fasting, but this is the most obvious one that all of us will experience, you know, over the time. The second point that I think Islam differs is, is to give the priority. And as I said before, this is what I, I want to highlight. In this, uh, most scholars, they say the priority given to the religion first, not to the body. Okay? In the modern medicine, the priority is given to the body. They don't care about the other matters, uh, the way they care about the religion. Whereas in Islam, the first one to be put at the top was the body, uh, the, the religion. Then you have the life as the second one, and then come the other things. So here, to have, to have it in your mind, when oriented about these priorities, you know, according to Islam, I think there's a difference between this, this look and the modern look. The third one, since Buddhism is a, an experimental uh, science, it's a subject of change. You make change everything completely. You may have a revolution, you know, of some discovery which change everything, you know. Whereas in Islam, it's a matter of regulation. What do I mean by this? You have basic matters, you have essential matters that don't, no one has the right to change, okay? Then you have the flexible or the controversial matter that is, needs some discussion or whatever, you know. And those five items that I mentioned you know, shortly before, they are included in the first one. Yani they are uh, looked at as essential, as basic, you know, in, uh, whenever you want to look Islamically. You know. Whereas, to be you know, in medicine, modern, modern medicine, there's nothing, you know, to be settled down and to be highly respected till the hereafter. And that's why those among you who read about the history of medicine, you know, they find that how the modern medicine completely is different, you know, than the ancient one, you know. And that's why when I got a question about the old medicine, you know, many, in many occasions I failed to, to answer that question. Okay. These are the main differences, you know. I am going to summarize them by soul, priority, and regulation. And these are much more, in, at least in my view, much more pronounced in Islam than in the modern medicine. Okay. Uh, then we have the general rules that they would, were put for, uh, to me to be highlighted, you know. And then I, I added to them other two rules, you know. The first rule, and this is it's taken from Foucault's books, necessity of a right prohibitions. Okay. When we have anything prohibited, it's not absolutely to, not to be practiced at all, because as you read in some verses in the Quran and elsewhere, this may be permitted by necessity only. And this is one of the main difference between what is <coughs> it's a prohibition, which usually has been more emphasized, you know, Islamically, and what is like an obligation. An obligation it doesn't have that stand that we have it for the prohibitions. For sure, since medicine is an open science, you know, Islam is not going to interfere in many aspects of it, but whatever is prohibited, you should judge yourself, you should know that this is not going to be permitted except by necessity. And this is the first rule that we are speaking about. The second rule about it, 
Her, uh, harm has to be removed at every cost, if possible. And this is derived from the holy hadith, لا ضرر ولا ضرر. Again, uh, you, you are going to find many of the verses in the holy Quran, in the prophetic uh, uh, tradition, they go by this. The third one, accept the lesser of the two harms if both can to, uh, cannot be avoided. And here, not always we are in the positive side. We may be in the negative one, you know. And this is even medically well recognized. When you, when you are given two choices, choices, you should go by the least harmful. Okay? And this is, is a, an Islamic rule. And the last one which was given to me, pub, public interest overrides the individual interest. Okay, and here, you, uh, in many problems, you are not going to look at the individual himself, you are going to, to look at the, common, uh, the community you know, in, in general. What I added to them, I added two rules from my side, you know, I don't know how accurate I am in this, you know. Firstly, what has been mentioned in the Holy Quran, وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ Our presence in this, in this life, Correct me if I'm wrong. In the Western look, it's by its outcome, uh, the, the outcome of this life, namely to gain some money, gain some fame, some uh, knowledge or degree. Whereas Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, the main purpose of your presence is to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And for me, this is a significant difference. And in the rules, we should always, all of us, we should be familiar with this particular rule. The second rule that the Prophet said, خيركم من طال عمره وحسن عمله. Okay? I want to stay, not to enjoy my life, I want to stay to have much more perfect deeds, you know, toward to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is a noble aim, noble target, you know. Uh, a person like me may not understand the elderly who is in nursing, in, at nursing home, you know. For me, he is waiting for this and he has nothing to do. But perhaps he has a lot of duties to do, okay? The, those duties, they, they may not sound as beneficial to the community, but for him, for him it's going to be too beneficial. Because the Prophet says, the best among you, those who have long age with uh, good deeds. Okay. The last comment, I'm going to be brief, you know, about it, perhaps to, to go toward Maghrib, you know. These are very important points, you know, perhaps each one of them needs uh, half hour or one hour to speak about, you know, and we are going to relate many of the problems to this, you know. But I'll try, inshallah, later on after Maghrib prayer to to answer some of the question or uh, if there's uh, some cases, you know, that will be represented to me to try to judge them according to what I have done. So here, basically, again, we are much more experienced in this than me, you know. Correct me if I'm wrong, you know. I look at the modern medicine cover, governed by, firstly, the economy. And secondly, by the freedom that here, they look at the human as absolutely free, which is against Islam also. Because in Islam, you, you cannot find any free person at all. All of us, we are governed, we are affected, we are influenced by certain factors, you know. And the best among us, you know, in Islam, those who are influenced basically or uh, at large, you know, by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Thirdly, the, the difference between Islam and the regulation, okay? And here, any, uh, anything, any law, or maybe changed, maybe amended, maybe done different, you know, just for the experimental trial that you have. Whereas some of this regulation, Islamically, if you, if you prove to me about a no look, which go with the other assets in Islam, the other rules in Islam, the other bases of Islam, 
I have no, no problem you know, of accepting. If it's otherwise, I cannot accept it. One time, we have a lecturer, you know, when I was in Riyadh City working in one hospital, you know, a Canadian person came to speak about liver disease. And he said, you know, at that time, this little bit old, you know, 15 years ago or so, he said, liver disease in its development, you know, has, when you look at the books written in it, you know, 200 years ago, you are going to find some treatment there, you know, you may laugh at some of them, you know. Then after 50 years, it has been changed completely, upside down, you know, and they start to having fun, you know, of the previous one. After another 50 years, they return back to the original one, you know, in many aspects. Here, what I'm trying to say, in medicine, there's nothing fixed, okay? And you may have anything changed, you know, according to what you look, and in some occasion, you may return back to uh, the, the original, point that you, you, you have started, you know, whereas in Islam, it's not the case, okay? You have some base, you have some essential that they, they should be uh, considered in all aspects of the life, okay? <coughs> so, by these main matters, you know, I, I should regulate myself. To be honest with you, alhamdulillah, our scholars, they did not tight us a lot, you know. I and mean, medically, the medical view from Islamic point, if it doesn't contradict with the base of it, it sounded to me as an open one, okay? And you, you may have a lot of changes in the ideas or what, whatever, whatever, as long as we, we keep up the condition that I mentioned before, okay? Uh, I would rather say, we as Muslims, we are poor nowadays because we need for those modern procedures or techniques that has been created to discuss it Islamically. And to do this, you know, for example, I'll give you the example which is in my mind, you know, for organ transplant. Many, many, they may ask me about it. I'll tell them, if I said halal or haram, don't believe me. Because it needs well-experienced, you know, doctors to sit down with well-experienced, you know, religious uh, scient uh, scientists, you know, of Islam and try to get out the best answer for many of these problems. It's not only or organ donation or transplantation. We have many of these problems, you know, nowadays that they need this setting to be done. Unfortunately, up till now, it's not done, you know, uh, I may know some of the reason. I may not know, know the others, you know, of these reasons. The last point, you know, and this has perhaps nothing to speak about ethic, you know, but I want to put it down, you know, just to make everyone, you know, give consideration to it. Once uh, in US, even though I don't remember the details of that lecture, I was asked to give a lecture about the prophetic medi medi medication, okay? In my experience and what I remember now, in Islam, the protective medicine is much more superior than what the one we have nowadays. Whereas perhaps the active one nowadays, because of the advanced tool that we have, it has much more superiority than what was available that day. I don't relate it to Islam because this is uh, time-wise, okay, at that day. So the, what I would like of the Muslim doctors now, nowadays to give a good consideration you know, about the protective medicine. By this, I think we, we, I end, end my introduction. If there's any uh, comment, any uh, argument, any uh, disagreement with any part of it, a portion of it, I'll get benefit of you because, as you may see, and this is a subject that not touched by uh, many of our scholars, you know, or by many of our doctors, and I would like to correct myself and have better view of them, you know. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. What's the plan now to pray?